Hello, and how goes it? I'm Andrew, your DM for the day, along with this band of miscreants and murder hobos you see here. We're the yeah. Dirty Rollers, and this is our Rhyme of the Frost Ooh. Maiden campaign. What? what? Thank you for Yo. joining us. Welcome back, everybody that's kept up with us, and welcome to any new people. We're glad to have you, and we hope we are uh, entertaining enough for you to want to stick around and continue watching. Um, I'd also recommend if you're new to at least go back a couple episodes and watch what's happening here with all these little guys, because these are kind of fun. Uh, this is kind of a, a weird little ridiculous quest here. Um, I'd go back a, a two, three episodes to, to watch this little Nautiloid episode. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, just make sure you uh, subscribe so you're not missing any upcoming videos of either this one, the Goblin Campaign, or the upcoming um, Wild Beyond the Witchlight playthrough. Um, be sure you check out the description down below for links to our uh, Twitch channel where you're where we will be live streaming the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Uh, once that's going, and currently stream uh, map making and Dungeon Alchemist. Make sure you check out the link for the Society6 shop for shirts, mugs, uh, hoodies, stickers, all sorts of good stuff in there. there there's no butt plugs in the Society6 shop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's not there. Um, <laughs> what else is down there? Uh, links to the social media. Um, any maps that we use? I try to drop links for uh, maps that other people have made like this. Um, the, the previous map for the Crash Nautiloid uh, that was made by someone on uh, Roll20. And I'll make sure I link that because I can't recall the name right off the top of my head at the moment. Um, but yeah, be sure to check that out. These guys, these uh, uh, Ceramorphs here, I believe those are the... Um, uh, I want to double check, but I'm pretty sure those are the David North illustrations ones. So I'll always give him a shout out because he makes top notch uh, tokens for creatures and things. Um, pretty sure that's those. But uh, yeah, I'll double check it and I think it's his. But if it's not, then I will make sure to to uh, put that in the description for this episode. Uh, so I don't want to slow us down too much here. Maybe I'll look while James is doing a recap. Um, so with that out of the way, the only other note I have before we get into things here is, um, uh, let's see, things are looking blurry. Um, they do look a little bit blurry, but not terrible. I'm wondering if it has something to do with that update they did. Yeah, actually they do look a little blurry when you zoom in. I'm not yeah. sure what's going on. Roll20 seemed to have updated since the last time we played and so there's some wonky stuff going on here, but. Yeah, we'll get through it. The, what, what's weird is it's only our character tokens. Yeah, that's what I noticed too. It's only the character tokens. The creature tokens. tokens all look pretty crisp. Yep. Yeah. I can't see anything. The screen is completely black. Scroll down. <laughs> I'm as far down as I can scroll. Uh, is your token not here? Uh, it's because you don't have a token here. Oh. Oh. That's fine. You have no token here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone have a good day. Anyone enjoy yourself? No. <laughs> oh, stay, please, please, please. Where the hell did your token go? Um, Check the rock. <laughs> <laughs> it got sucked into the rock. He's in the this damn, This damn rock. There we go. Just token. Oh, yeah, you got Ilnok here, but is he still in the rock or is he out? Uh, he's in the rock at night. Yeah, he got he got sucked up into the rock after the fight in the cave. That's what I thought because it was very dramatic and upsetting. And Tumpy tried to violently keep him out of the of the rock. <laughs> violent. Oh yes, yes, he did. There we go. Um, close line. You will have to update Igna's health. Uh, you you are currently showing two of two. That's not fair. Well, I think I'll keep it this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and yet on that note, he's sitting on a really good backup. Uh, Tumpy will be absent. Uh, his player, Jacob, got called into work, so he cannot join us. He may be in on the next episode later today. Um, but for this one, he'll be out for sure. Um, but yeah. So the last, last quick little note now that that stuff's out of the way is uh, everybody's a little bit over leveled for where they're at. Um, I'll be making up for it as we go, kind of. Uh, 
adjusting things as needed so it's not a complete cakewalk, even though it still kind of turns out to be that way. Um, but they have, I think, one more quest after this one, and then they should be close to being caught up. So things should balance out. If you see some some weird discrepancies in what uh, what level they are versus where they're at, if you know the the module, that's why we started the uh, the campaign before um, we actually got into Frost Maiden. Uh, I let them keep their same characters, but they're a little little higher level um, than what the book wanted. But everything will even out, and then once they get caught up, they will uh, be overjoyed because they've been stuck at this level for a while. Because I didn't want to continue leveling them up and. And having to, to further try to balance things up. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So why don't we go ahead and meet the, the players, meet the characters uh, that they're playing. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make sure I pull the art up because James always yells at me for that. I don't yell. Oh, he's, he's so brutal and so violent. <laughs> oh, God. There we go. All right, that's tokens. Why is the art thing empty? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see. Is those? Oh, well. Okay. Uh, first off, James, you're up. I'm James, and I play Gu. I'm a Warforged monk of the Four Elements. You know what? The... I don't see them. Where did it go? Uh, they're no longer in the folder. Please hold. This work. This should work. Yeah, there we go. Bloop. There's there's G U. Yay. Okay. That's G U. Next up we got uh Chrissy, who are you playing? You are muted. Huh. There you go. Weird. I thought I unmuted like 10 minutes ago. I guess I didn't. Anyway, I play Ursula, the Dragonborn Warlock. Uh, her patron is the great old one, Issa, and she has a pseudo dragon familiar named Tamo, and she has a ferret named Cheese, and a floating dragon skull named Cow. Excellent. Uh, next up, we have. I, I, I almost don't want to do this. We have Melissa. Who are you playing? <laughs> My name is Melissa, and I play Cradle Jakili. She is a Tiefling Way of Mercy monk. Thank you. So a little more muted than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Garen, who are you playing? I play Garo, the seven foot Catman Tabaxi Bard, College of Swords. Perfect. Um, we got uh, Matt. Who are you playing? Uh, Igna, the man. Can you hear me? Yeah. Am I muted? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's weird. My button says I'm muted. Uh, Igna, the Mantor Barbarian Fighter. Excellent. And last but not least, the the late man in. Lewis, who are you playing? I'm Lewis, and uh, I'm playing The Rock. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> the man in The Rock. No, I'm playing uh, Ilnok. He's a high elf blade singer. I need to get a picture of the the rock now, it's just so I can pull that up the next time. Yeah. To do it. Cool. And then, like I said, uh, Jacob is out. He plays Tumpy. We'll show his art, but he's out today. Um, we've been using this this uh, magic rock to swap players in and out. So Tumpy will not be joining us today. So James, you got a recap for us? Yes, I do. Alrighty, so in the last episode, uh, we had started a second fight with a uh, whole lot of strange little creatures and medium-sized creatures, the smaller ones being called Dolgrims with multiple arms and weapons on them, and the uh, larger creatures with tendrils and just strange appendages coming off their body, uh, Dolgaunts. Yep. And... Uh, yeah, the fight started in the cave and uh, made its way deeper into the cave. And uh, uh, in the middle of the fight, Igna popped out of the crystal. And uh, that helped out because with his uh, wild magic uh, rage abilities, it helped with crowd control. 
Uh, Tumpy did his usual thing, uh, went after the biggest creature there and uh, <laughs> did some crazy grapples. Every so often when Gia would hit uh, one of the Dolgaunts, he there's just some weird little feeling. Uh, in the middle of the fight, Ilmok felt a, a strange uh, force pulling him towards the crystal. Uh, then uh, after uh, Cradle, after some fun with uh, Cradle, uh, getting weapons knocked out of her hands and her jumping down a little uh, ledge to jump back up into place to uh, retrieve the weapon and uh, some uh, some fun uh, blade flourishes from our bard. Uh, Jiu had uh, killed the last Dolgon, I believe, and luckily uh, rolled high enough on uh, a wisdom check to realize that the, some of these creatures were uh, from where G was from originally, uh, Eberron. Yes. I also and want to mention after that. That might have been the worst oh, yeah. rolling I've ever had as a GM. That was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All the ones? But, uh, oh, dude, it was nuts. <laughs> oh, uh, but uh, after the fight, Ilnox started getting sucked into the crystal and uh, while he staved off for a moment or two, he took a note out and tossed it to Igna. And uh, Tumpy attempted <laughs> to uh, keep Ilmok out of the rock by uh, doing some, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, some uh, <laughs> either body slam, some grappling, maybe even a clothesline to try to keep him away from the rock. Uh, it proved to just be ineffective because Ilmok got sucked into the rock and... Uh, Shortly after that, Igna had a, wrote a note that was left over from Ilmok. And uh, I can't necessarily, I, I, what was it, like apologies? Oh, he had it a, was a really uh, it real was a nice well long it note. Fant- it was the best letter. Amazing. It, 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 was, it, was very cons- it was a very considerate note to somebody that he's like, I know it's going to suck inside that thing. And I'm sorry if it keeps on switching between us but it just really went into great detail and it was fantastic uh so great job on the note because that's just you know that's just great friggin uh, role paint role playing right there yeah um it was good after after that uh they uh noticed that in the back of the cave there was a crystal cluster the power crystal that uh little uh hold on i have the name right here uh Dredovic. Uh, Dredovic had uh, sent them out to pick up, uh, which would be their life support and uh, only way off of uh, this planet and possibly to another dimension. Though G was uh, kind of uh, thrown off by the fact that he had this feeling that these weird looking creatures were from where he was from. Uh, They uh, they all uh, uh, sorry. They all got on their uh, axe beaks, and uh, Tumpy got in his, uh, his in his wagon, and uh, Gu hopped in the back with the crystal, and uh, rode out for a little bit just to get to the ship in time, and uh, getting ready to install. Though on the way, uh, Gu had stared a little bit at the crystal a little much, and just kind of felt some weird little power from it, uh, just hearing. Uh, hearing thoughts from the surrounding uh, surrounding friends and uh, some of their emotions uh, just through the crystal. Oh, yeah. So whatever the hell happened, uh, that's, that's a strange little, ha- that's his final little, how do you do? And they got back with the crystal and uh, Dredovic seems to look very weakened right now and uh, desperate to uh, get this all uh, hooked up. Excellent. Thank that's you. all I got. Yeah, um, I see. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys uh, just arrived back uh, at the Nautiloid. Um, jumping on board. You can see that the outside door. So I'm going to move you guys out of here just for now. Should have done that a second ago. Um, Yeah, this outside door here is closed when you arrive. 
Um, but the, the ship, other than accumulating a little bit more snow and ice, appears to be how you left it. Are we supposed to be seen uh, outside, or are we supposed to be seen inside? You should yeah, see I the thought, ship I right now we... out on the deck. Okay. I, I, I thought that we had uh, left off on him opening the door and seeing that we'd shown up with the crystal. I feel like that, too. Oh, okay. I bet. Then... Whoop. <laughs> I'll move you back. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was about, he was about to guide us post haste, and at one point, G said, "Yeah, we have some questions for you." Yeah. He. Okay, my bad. Uh, so when you guys um, get in here, you, I want to check though. Everybody can see the map now, right? So we were having some issues before. I see it. Here. I see it. I can see it. All right, Lewis. I don't know. We just see the black screen. Oh. Mm-hmm. Could you see it before? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Before. Oh yeah, his token. Okay, down. okay, no, that's all right. Uh, I forgot. I put his back on the GM layer because he's in a rock at the moment. Uh, oh. Matt, you can see now. Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, Gu and Cradle being the first ones through the door, you guys notice that it is considerably colder uh, on the inside of this ship than uh, than when it was uh, the last time you guys uh, were here. Um, and Drodovix, um seems to be a, a bit paler than when you left as well, um, but he seems uh, quite like animated and excited to have the. Uh, the Psy Crystal uh, back? Because you, you did offer it, right? I think yeah, we were about yeah, we were, to, right? Yeah, yeah we were uh, heading to uh, the area that it needs to be installed. He was uh, leading us. Okay. He was really, uh, really ecstatic. So, uh, life support. Um, life support is... Okay, found it. Whoop, sorry, smack the mic. Make it. Smack it. Smack it. All right, it's up here. Okay, so he's all excited. Um, face tentacles, though a little bit pale, are uh, waving around. Um, he leads you up the stairs. Uh, like he, he motions for everybody to follow him. Um, to get in from the cold a little bit, though it's not much warmer in here. Um, he heads up the stairs and disappears up this way. Oops. My mouse is doing this fun thing lately where it likes to double click when I'm not double clicking. Oh, mm-hmm. when does that too? It's it's static, oh. it's static build up. It's very annoying. Um, okay. So you, you guys, uh, following them out. Oh, and who yeah. has the, the stone at the moment? The rock. Um, G U does. G U does. Yeah. Okay. Wait, which rock? The rock. The uh, oh 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 the, the oh, magic rock. The, uh, oh, the magic rock. Not the side uh, crystal. The the magic rock. Okay. 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 I. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, because I made it into a little necklace and I'm holding on to it. Okay. Good to know. Oh. All right, so I have it tied around, not my neck, but oh, my no. dick neck. Oh god! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Damn it, Matt! I was taking a drink. It's not. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> dick necklace. So. Of course. Why? Poor Andy Ill knocked in a dick rock, a cock oh, rock. <laughs> oh no! Do I feel a? Do I feel a oh. heat in my loins? No. No, you feel the circulation being cut off by whatever you tie around yourself. Yeah. Um, that, that's not possible. It's like thinking, castrating yeah. a sheep. No, it's, castrating a, it's, a sheep. it's like a cock ring. It's much too thick to uh, to be to cut off any circulation. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, if you're following, go ahead and, and head up the stairs. Whoever's going up there. The rest of you guys staying outside. 
I'm no, going. I want to go. I want to go. Personally, come on. Yeah. Wait. I just, just, just you across just, the map. <laughs> just stop at the uh, the top of the stairs there. <laughs> oh, I don't know where I am now. I'm lost. Here, oh, here. here we go. Oh my god, I hate Earl Tony. <laughs> <laughs> A glowing endorsement. I I just I never I can't move anymore for some reason, and trying to move is. Were really you stuck cool. in the wall? I think so. Yeah, yeah. You and might I have can't do arrow keys anymore because it doesn't let me do that either. Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna grab you and your menagerie and just move you up there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Oops. Oh, this mouse. I see a little cow mouse. in there. I see a well. Silver words of a cow. Tumpy punch, tumpy punch. Uh, <laughs> tumpy, tumpy, tumpy. Tumpy punch the cow. Uh, okay. <laughs> So he leads you up here. Um, this area, um, it, it's like a. Uh, let me see if there's a better image here. It's dark for me. There we go. John, why is it dark? I don't know. Oh, oh I can see. Did you scroll around, <laughs> Peter? You, you, you should, you you should be up here. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's where I see myself, but I'm like in blackness. Move, move your character off the stairs, maybe. Yeah. Oh. I can't move. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, oh. There we go. Okay. You Thank you, Andy. So I think they have... Well, no, I don't know why. I don't know why you couldn't see. I thought maybe they had walls on the stairs or something, but they do not. So, Not sure. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, up here, this is like mark an open deck. This is outside. So when you near the top of the stairs, there's this uh, this weird, disgusting, flushy portal that opens up at the top and lets you guys come up here. Um, this particular deck looks to be uh, the battle deck. So it's this is kind of the second level sandwich between the very top of the nautiloid and the bottom deck where you were at. And the stairs up here, like I said, lead to an outside area. There's another big ballista up here. Um, let's see, this one actually appears to be functioning, uh, where there's the one down below seemed like it was wrecked. Um, and you can see the, the walls on the outside edge, all like, uh, let's see, draw here, the, the Northern wall here and the Southern wall here look to be aligned with ballista bolts hanging up for easy access to, uh, to grab and load up. Um, mm -hmm. Then you see another portal here where Drudovic seems to be going. Um, he waves you guys forward. It's another like circular, nasty flush portal over here. Uh, he walks up there and waves his tentacles at it and the door slides open. Just <laughs> opens up. Ew. Oh, that's a neat trick. Wave your tentacles and the butthole opens. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Wave your tentacle oh, and the bottle buddy. opens. Uh, let's see. By the way, uh, this, this is a little side tangent, but I recently heard that, that people frown upon reading when, when GMs read the, uh, the box text in the books, and I can't for the life of me really fathom why. Um, I'm going to do it just as a... Uh, Anybody that's like paid attention that knows the module, I've been reading the box text. Don't really care. I, I don't understand why people get worked up about stuff like that, but I'm going to keep Weird. doing it. Keep doing it, Andy. Oh, I'm going to. Do your thing. As, as the, the person that pointed it out uh, mentioned, uh, professional writers wrote it. So, like, I'm not a professional writer. So, that what's written here in the box text is probably better than I could write. I'm going to keep that reading what it. it's for? Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, it's looked down upon when people read it. So, I, I don't understand. Maybe people should quit QQ. That's the that's the internet. Um, yep. Let's see. I'm stuck in the wall, by the way. How? I don't know. I there's out of my way. way. There I'm we go. Try. Try again. Oh no, she's gaseous formed into the flesh. <laughs> there we go. Jeez, sorry. Tumpy will stay in the back, out of the way, because I feel like that's what he does. Ooh, it's a bit crowded in here. 
Okay. In here, <clears throat> um, you can see uh, crystals protrude from a chitinous ceiling uh, and in this oddly shaped room. Um, some of the crystals are lit, others are flickering or burned out. Plates of chitin have been pried loose from the walls in places, exposing cavities filled with tangled masses of black tubes. Scattered across the floor are unusual looking tools. So he mentioned, uh, Drodovix mentions rather, that uh, this is their their maintenance room. Um, let's see. So he's got uh, different tools and things laying around in here. He says this is the maintenance room. Um, he asks you to follow him into the next room to... Uh, is this him? Kind of buried under here. To follow... I'd like to ask him, so many rooms, are you taking us to a dungeon? A dungeon? No, it's a ship. The ship's dungeon? No, this is a maintenance room. The, the next room is our propulsion room. And in fact, if, if that one would be so kind as to follow me in here with the crystal, we, we desperately need it. Any points over at GU's way? I'm following. Okay. Propulsion room? I hope there's food there. <laughs> he just looks at you, gives you a weird look. All right. Uh, in here, uh, this room contains a five foot diameter sphere of shiny black metal with small transparent hexagonal windows. Sharp metal tines resembling grasping claws protrude from the nearby walls and ceiling, stretching toward the sphere, but stopping short of it. Along the walls are mounted control stations studded with knobs and dials. Um, and you can see in the, the middle of the black sphere, you see the, the charred remains of what looks like a fist sized crystal. And it's got like a faded uh, purplish coloration to it. It looks somewhat similar to the one that GU's carrying, but um, it's cracked and doesn't appear to have that same inner glow that the one that you have does, GU. Hmm. Okay. So he um, reaches forward and he pulls out the... The, the charred, cracked crystal and tosses it on the ground. Clunk. Just sounds like a, a big chunk of solid glass hitting uh, the deck on the ship. And then he, he reaches out your way for the, uh, the side crystal that you have. I, uh, I hand it out. Okay. So th thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Any it tries to fit. You can see it's not like the quite the same size as the other one, the same shape even. So he's got to tinker around with it a little bit. Um, let's see. So out of the, the little cavity that he pulls it out from, you can see like a set of those um, pincher claws look like they were holding it. He takes out one of his strange looking little tools and tinkers with that claw that, that was reaching out. It's this little mechanical claw contraption. It takes him just a minute or two. He loosens some things up so the claws open up a little bit further. And um, they're, they're big enough to kind of grasp that new side crystal. He tightens everything up and pushes the claw back towards the center of the sphere. And it's just it's like a satisfying little click as it engages. You can see the other, um, the other little windows, I think. Yeah, the hexagonal windows. Uh, start lighting up after the psi crystal you gave him enters. Um, and then you can feel more than hear like a, a soft hum. You feel like it travels through the ship. Ooh. Probably. Does it seem like, like if we feel a weird hum, is there like uh, something uh, going on with the, uh, not, I don't know how to say it, the aura, if you will. Like if it's like a, uh, kind of warming up in here or something because of it, at least from the newfound energy? Uh, not yet, but it definitely, it, it feels like whatever uh, he did with this crystal, it feels like um, some kind of life has been brought back to the ship. Um, you know, you guys remember it was, it's this weird mix of like organic material, like the doors and the tentacles that were outside and then like wood and metal and stuff all fused together. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, it does, it feels like some kind of power has been brought back to the ship anyway. 
And about the same time as that, that hum starts going through, um, after you hand off the, the crystal to you, you lose the, that surface level, like telepathy that you've had for a bit. Yeah. And, uh, Igna, your, uh, your rock, rock with an R, uh, starts heating up. Mm-hmm. And you feel an uncomfortable pull oh. uh, this way. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> so, it starts to get a little tingle, and he's just—he sees his, uh, you know, <laughs> his mentor s <laughs> uh, kind of yank to the left a bit. And he's like, oh. Oh, where you where you going, buddy? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yanking to the left and tugging backwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He just kind of follows it as it uh, leads him out of the room. It seems. Igna, not and, now, uh, not now. About the same time, <laughs> Ursula, uh, when Igna comes out of the room, um, you feel a uh, something crash into your back, and you're God damn it. Uh, Tumpy, Tumpy runs oh, into no. you. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, we, we're oh no! Right now. Uh, so, uh, are you saying that Ursula is uh, trapped between a cock and a hard place? Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Tumpy's horn and Igna's horn are facing each other. And oh, Ursula's smack in the uh, middle. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> as I realize that Tumpy is, you know, getting closer to uh, the sensitive bits, I, I start to freak out and go, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> guys, and I'm guys, like, frantically it. trying to undo the uh, the necklace around, uh, <laughs> around my waist. <laughs> All right. So, Ursula, what are you doing when you feel Tumpy crash into you? Um, Igna is like walking out of the door being led forward in quite the fashion. <laughs> um, is the crystal doing what it did last time where there was like a visual effect? Yeah. Yeah. This is, it's not really new to you guys. It's still strange, but not new. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh God, this is happening again. No. And she's like trying to squeeze out from between the two. Okay. Uh, they're not like smashing you together yet. This is just like as soon as Igna walks out the door, like you can see what's happening here. Um, she's gonna, I guess, uh, try to get the heck out of the way before she's smashed. I like that you moved all your pets out of the way first. Yes. <laughs> the important Women and children yeah. first. Yeah. All right. Uh, Igna, make a just a, a dex check for me. Sixteen. Okay, so you, you hurry up and fumble around with uh, how you tie this thing around yourself for reasons unknown, and uh, Tumpy, is, like arms waving, uh, Spike leading forward, comes like stumbling forward towards the rock. You, you get it off yourself and. Like it's it's not connected to you anymore. What do you do with it? Uh, so as I, it's like getting it up. As I'm getting it up, <laughs> as I'm getting it up uh, I just kind of like you know I get it and I see Tumpy and then I I just throw it forward to Tumpy and I go Tumpy no as it like leaves my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the rock collides with Tumpy and Tumpy disappears in a oh, cloud of smoke. No. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> Ilnok. <laughs> Ilnok pops out with a a rock sitting in his lap. <laughs> Is he yet? Yeah. Oh. Is he on top of a cradle? No. no. I just had to, to move his token around there. Uh so with my same outstretched hand that I had as I was reaching out to Tumpy, it, I closed my fingers and turned my hand a little bit. So instead of an open palm, it's now a point. And I just go, you. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. What the hell happened? Hell knock. 
Where's where's Tumpy? <laughs> and I see him in the rock. rock. Yeah, about the time where she says, uh, where's Tumpy? You can hear a bunch of uh, like, clink, 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 clink. <laughs> and you can look in and there's a little tiny Tumpy rage beating the piss out of the inside of this rock. <laughs> and, oh, no. and it seems like every time he does, like another little, like almost metallic looking spike appears on the outside of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> quickly hand that over to Igna. Uh, I, I I take the rock necklace, like by the necklace bits, and I just go, well, I'm not putting you around there anymore. <laughs> uh, and then I uh, I transfer it to my other hand, and I, I reach out my, my hand, and I, I extend it to shake Ilnok's hand, and I go, uh, I guess we're out at the same time now. <laughs> uh, looks like it, but why is he in there now? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm Another use, mystery of this confounded prison, I guess. I'm going to use prestidigitation to clean my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I notice it, but I don't respond to it. <laughs> I just kind of see it happen. <laughs> All right. So after a couple minutes more of uh, uh, Drodovic's tinkering around, that did not do what I wanted it to. Thank you, Roll20. Um, after, uh, yeah, anyways, Drodovic's tinkering around in there for another few minutes. Um, he comes out and he's, he's like rubbing his hands together and he's holding them out. He says, uh, do you feel that? It feels like it's getting warmer. I, I think, I think this will work. I don't know how far it'll get us, but it'll certainly get us out of this frozen hellscape. Maybe into another one. I don't know, but yeah, I think this one will work for now. He's like very excited. And the whole time he's talking, he's got the Davy Jones thing going on, or the the tentacles are all flailing about all excitedly. You can see a little bit of color coming back to him. Um, he says. I think you saved us. I think you saved the, the remaining of us. Um, I think I, I mentioned a reward. Uh, if you guys are interested, yes. you can. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do we get one of your uh, squid babies? What? No. 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 Why would you? Uh, oh, no. People of this world hate our offspring. Why, why, why would you want one? Oh, yes. I would much like one. No. Why? Why would you want one? Uh, for reasons. <laughs> for reasons. Oh, that sounds awful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Hang on a second for that one. Uh, for reasons. Whoops, that's not the right thing. For reasons. Yeah, that's so, uh, threatening. <laughs> All right. So you feel like a little probe in your mind. Uh, what are your reasons that you're trying to hide that Dredovix will now know about? <laughs> well, picture having a good time with the squid baby, with Cradle <laughs> playing with it. And uh, you are and walking then... a very, very thin line. <laughs> I th <laughs> clarify. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can picture Cradle playing with the squid baby and then uh, it going along and then you see like uh, maybe we get into battle and it accidentally gets hurt and dies. And oh my the, god. And then at the very end of it you see uh, Gero like sucking up a tentacle like a noodle. <laughs> wow. Oh. Do no. you see all of the the color that he Dredovix had previously regained uh, drain from his face after he stares at Garo for a minute? Uh, he says, "By all the gods, deities in the astral sea, that one is not allowed near any <laughs> of our kind ever." <laughs> Please leave my ship. Oh, oh, oh! What? I, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please leave. 
<laughs> my ship. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, I'll see you guys outside, I guess. Uh. What <laughs> reward, though? Hang on, I'm moving him out of the ship. Sounds <laughs> 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 like right. a disappointed parent. <laughs> He's, Jesus. You are downstairs now, Garo. You can. I'll, I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and he, <laughs> Dredovic says, please, uh, I, I do hope that the rest of you are nothing like the other one. And I cannot fathom why you wish to have him in your group. <laughs> like to, do you, do you know what he was thinking and planning? Uh, I'd like to just kind of exclaim, I used to be a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> he, he cocks what would be an eyebrow if he had one. Uh, he says, "Used to be." We don't. We 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 try not to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> just uh, do your best to keep it up. I guess. Uh, okay. Um, the, the sooner we get you off my ship, the better, and the sooner we can leave. Uh, he heads up these stairs here outside. And I'm just going to assume the rest of you are all going up there. Is anybody staying behind? I go. No. I'll, I'll be following. Sorry. I go. Yeah, yeah. I go. Whoops. Uh, oh, uh, there's... Uh, you. Wait, where'd they go? I just fucking yeeted. <laughs> Cradle outside ah! the ship. There we go. <laughs> yeeted. Does not mean to The snail trail of snot behind as she flew across the map. <laughs> oh, God. <Gross. laughs> all right. <laughs> up here. Uh, suspended from the ceiling of this high dome chamber is a complex lattice of bioluminescent jellyfish that use the glowing tips of their tendrils to form constellations. A high back chair with short armrest capped with sparkly blue crystal orbs tilts up towards the display. A panel on the starboard wall lies open, exposing pulsing tendril of flesh embedded with crystal shards. Um, you also see another one of the, um, the beings, uh, the Dredovix is, the little small in stature, uh, uh, Ceramorph looking people. Um, him and uh, Dredovix appear to be talking when you get to the top of the stairs. Um, okay. Um, Dredovix turns around. It, it seems like they're they're being very animated. Um, and I said they they seem like they were talking, but you hear no words or anything. Um, this they they're both kind of gesturing. You can see their their tentacles kind of like reaching out towards each other and flailing around a little bit, but you don't hear any words. Then Dredovic turns back around and he says, uh, "Excuse my excuse my companion. Uh, this is this is Vor, and he does not want anyone here." I explained what you did for us and how we can finally leave this cursed place, but he's. Still kind of, uh, well, he's, he's not very happy. Um, it's best that I just, uh, give you what I promised and, and have you on your way. Uh, he is in quite the hurry to leave. And in fact, he started our launch, uh, procedures already. So maybe, um, you, you follow me real fast and, uh, we'll get you out of here before he decides to leave and launch us to the stars. To the stars for Issa. <laughs> Are you saying that all out? She kind of says it to herself as she's drawing the jellyfish aliens in her notebook. Oh, yeah. The the ones that are making the constellations up high. Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. I'll remember. Uh, in this room, um, and nine, you uh, see a dome chamber. Uh, this one appears to be full of clutter. Uh, a lot of it piled on top of a table, which is the, the table in the middle of GU where you're parked in front of, uh, with one foot high legs. So it's not very tall. It's just a short table. It appears to be just tall enough for uh, Vorin and Dredovix to tinker around on. Uh, behind the table is a five foot diameter crystal sphere uh, mounted atop a low stand. Um, otherwise, in the chamber, you see five strange glowing gizmos attached to the chitinous walls seven feet above the floor. These devices look like the tips of metal wands held in pincher claws. So they're the same, sort of the same claws that were down in the uh, 
the propulsion room, maintenance bay downstairs. Mm. Um, let's see. He walks over um, and fishes around on that table for a minute. I really wish. Let's see. That's, that's, that's not doing at all what I want you to. And... Oh, there we go. Shoot. <laughs> not on the table. There we go. All right. He fishes around in here for a second. He, he knocks a few things over. You can see a couple little electrical discharges, like little flashes of light happen on the, the table here. Um, ah, 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 I found them. Um, he starts uh, moving things off to the side. He picks up a little crate and starts tossing things in the, this little crate. Um, in the crate, after a, a minute of digging around, he comes around and hands to you. You can see what look like um, two small. Um, actually, let me see if they're in here. See if I have a picture to show you. I think it'd be more amusing just to show you a picture of it. Um, please hold. Yeah. Hey, B rollers! Don't forget to like oh, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> James, you're encouraging her. I'm sorry. It's funny to me. <laughs> Get um, yourself a hoodie. Yeah, I don't here. It's perfect for that autumn weather that'll be right around the corner. <laughs> it's like I, I keep torturing Chrissy with it's it's fall. No, not yet. Not. <laughs> imagine walking down the sidewalk with your dirty roller hoodie having your dumpkin spice latte dumpkin spice <laughs> <laughs> be the top of the town looking so cool in that dirty roller gear I don't think it's in here okay um, roll a nat 20 on super cool <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Anyways, uh, when I, oh wait, you know what? I just remembered. Uh, might be able to show you. Might be able to show you this way. Oh my god! I have a terrible time with this. Uh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Is it in here? Get that dump and spice latte. <laughs> Anytime you want. I like mine with extra soy milk. There we go. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Prefer goat milk, but they always look at me like I'm crazy. So I bring my own sometimes. <laughs> All curdled. There we go. All right. Oh. See the thing that he's holding in this picture? Is the noisy cricket. The noisy <laughs> cricket. There are two of those in this crate that he's handing you, GU. Um, along with those two, there is a what looks like a metal uh, monocle with a kaleidoscope, kaleidoscopic lens. Um, the Ooh. other one is a what looks like a slimy coif um, <laughs> that looks like what? it might be alive. <laughs> a coif is a piece of armor that goes around your neck. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't say those things together. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, the book wrote it, not me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the slimy coif uh, appears like it may or may not be alive still. Um, yeah, he hands you that. Um, he says, as, as promised, uh, here you are. Um, we all uh, appreciate you um maybe not so much for killing our large friend downstairs but i think uh what you did and helping us get off this cursed planet uh makes up for the misdeed also thank you for not hurting the small ones never never they're pressed never it says now i would ask you to please leave Unless so you wish to go to space. So he gave us two of his his noisy crickets? Yep. 
Ooh. Wow. Interesting. What's the slimy coif though? Can can Ursula ask him about the slimy coif? Oh, he says it's a space slug. It <gasps> it will grant you uh a certain uh mental powers. Um should what? you wear it, should you be able to tolerate its um unsightly nature? Oh. Uh, I'd like to point at the at the little guns too and, and go, and and what do those do? You don't have these here? It's, uh, does anyone have a crossbow on them? Uh, uh, I might, maybe. Maybe? Let me look. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure I do. I just never use it. <laughs> nope. No, no crossbow. No crossbows? I... Elnock, do you have one? I do, I think. No. Yeah, I have a crossbow. Okay, so he looks you up and down, Ursula, and uh, he says, uh, it's like um, one of these uh, basic contraptions. Yeah, it's just a very unadvanced technology here. Um, what we have here uh, shoots uh, bolts of energy uh, instead of primitive projectiles such as those, and he like, points at the, the crossbow bolts. Um he says it, you, you should um, be very careful. They are dangerous. Um, but I, I trust that uh, helpful folks like yourself may be um, properly careful with them. And he starts to, to walk out here. He says, please, if you'll follow me, I would see you off the ship before we leave and take off. I'll, f- I'll follow him, but also I'll be kind of talking to him as we go. Okay. And uh, I'll start mentioning the uh, weird little creatures, the little fo- multiple armed ones with weapons, and then uh, start talking about the ten foot ones as we walk. All right. So um, nobody's staying behind up here, right? And yeah, I have a question. Yeah. If uh, if Igna chooses to stay on the ship, can I play Igna in the eventual Spelljammer campaign? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you would like to. Check yourself out of Frost Maiden and check into Spelljammer. <laughs> Is it an option? I mean, if we do a Spelljammer campaign, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you would be voluntarily checking out of Frost Maiden. <laughs> and you'll make Tumpy very sad when he comes out of the rock. Oh, I guess I, I I haven't said goodbye to Tumpy, so I guess I can't. <laughs> you do still have the rock, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just be like, hey, bud, we're going to space. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an earnest movie. Yeah. Igna goes to space. <laughs> Tump, uh, Tump, Tumpy and Igna's uh, bogus adventure. <laughs> Excellent adventure. Ye would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would talk about those uh strange aliens with uh Dredovic on the way back. Okay. Um so Igna, what are you doing? Are you uh staying behind up here? N- no no, I, okay. I will <clears throat> I will uh I'll uh, I'll run my hand across the across everything as I as I'm walking by and I look back and I just I have like some whimsy in me as I kind of want to stay because it sounds like a fun new adventure. But <laughs> then I look back at the party walking forward and I go, maybe next time. The Adventures of Space Cow. <laughs> the Adventures of Space Cow. <laughs> space oh, Cow and Tony. Yeah. You imagine okay. if Jake came back and and uh, Matt took Igna and Tumpy to space and Cal. <laughs> he would be so angry if he was stuck with Cal in space. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so on the way down, um, Dredovix is, is is talking to you, G.U. Uh, what, what are you asking him exactly? Well, I'll just say... Uh, yeah, uh, what what are those creatures? Uh, where'd you pick them up? 
Or did you make those creatures? Um, he, he's trying to think for a second. He says, which creatures? Um, can you describe them? We had a, I want to say, a collection of creatures aboard the ship. Uh, some escaped. Well. Most escaped. Well, these uh, these were all uh, all around the crystal in little cave. Uh, there's little small ones with multiple arms and two mouths. But then, oh, the rotten yeah. little things! Ah, oh, disgusting. And and and, uh, and also the taller ones with uh, tendrils and uh, appendages uh, slapping around everywhere. Yes, uh, frightfully <laughs> disgusting. Um, we were going to take them back to uh, the other brain for more tests and um, see what we could learn from them and see if they had anything that we might be able to uh, apply to our colony. Uh, I, were they like that before or after you took one of them from Eberron? Oh, no, no, no. They, they came like that. We've done nothing to them. In fact, we try our best to not alter anything uh, until we are in the proper space and setting. Is that the truth? This is James. <laughs> James has patented insight checks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. with, with this one, can you blame me though? Come on. Can you blame me for this one? No. Do it up. We need to make a shirt that says insight check for you. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling. Oh my God. First roll. Okay. 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 Uh, 23. 23 I, he seems to be telling the truth i mean they're they're kind of hard to read um they don't have you know like the they don't have a mouth really uh so you can't watch like the little ticks in their like the, the corners of their mouth or anything like that when they talk you're watching his eyes you, you kind of got to feel that they talk with their tentacles and everything so nothing he's saying um leads you to believe he's lying nothing he's doing makes you think that either Okay, and uh, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, be quiet on the way out. <laughs> Can I ask him one more thing before we go? Yeah, yeah, you you still have a minute. Like you guys can talk to him on the way down. I just I moved all your tokens down, but whatever you guys want to ask will be like on the way. Um, first wants to ask. Uh, so this slug, um. What exactly does the slug do for you? Oh, oh, the, the slug will give you some some um, some minor mental powers. Um, let's see. Let me look it up real fast and tell you exactly what it does. I don't think it's in this book, though. I think it is in the DMG as a player's handbook. Did you say it was called a space slug? Yeah, that's just what he called it so far. Oh, okay. It's, it's not in here. Um, the slippery queef. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so slippery. Not at all. Oh, I look at that shirt, though. <laughs> yep, that's for James. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, interesting. This won't be a pain in the ass at all. Um, he says, uh, this is a minor, minor, uh, boost of your mental, uh, faculties here. Uh, so you would, while wearing it, you would have the ability to read, uh, surface level thoughts on, um, any like sentient creatures, uh, like your friends here, for instance, you ever want to find out what any of them think about you, you can, you know, mm. um, just, just wear it and and see what they have to say, or have to not say, but think. Or um, you can maybe implant a thought or an idea to them. Um, it's mm. not guaranteed that they will follow it, but it's worth a try. Look at the thoughts. <laughs> Very interesting. Oh. Um, go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking, like, how exactly do you use the slug? Do you have to, like, let it crawl in your ear or something <laughs> awful like that? Uh, he does, like, the whole, like, hand on the chest and, like, throws his head back. Like, what? No. No, you wear it. <laughs> you put it on over your head. Let it rest on your, your shoulders. Clutching oh. his alien pearls. 
<laughs> clutch, clutch your slug coif. <laughs> Just make sure you say that word properly each time. <laughs> this is a very like kind of gross but interesting item. I I would want to ask about the monocle, whatever the hell that situation. Oh shoot, was. I forgot about the monocle. Yeah, yeah. we got to ask about that. Oh, for this one would be for the the um, the more tinkerous uh, members. If anyone likes to to build or make things, uh, it'll help you see small details much much clearer. Ames, you're knitting. Hmm. It'll be precise. Oh. <laughs> I know, but I know, but you know, doesn't uh, doesn't Gara make things once in a while? I, I don't want to uh, take the not, not only just uh, tinkering, really, but um, like finding finding small details and and things that might be hard to see otherwise. Maybe the dwarf can use it to fix those keg golems when he gets out. Oh, yeah. that's a good idea. Oh yeah. Any other questions? Andy, can I peek my head in the, the doorway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to say, excuse me, um, um, please accept this, this gift um, as a token of my apologies. Uh, sometimes my mind seems to wander towards, uh, you know, food when I'm hungry. So uh, here's a, a jar of honey. <laughs> you had honey. Oh yeah, you got it when you bought the meat, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, he he takes it from you. He says, "Honey, hmm. Have you had it before? It's absolutely delicious. This is actual food. This isn't a living thing. Since no um, brain thoughts here, it, it comes from living things, but I." Why would you? Yes, uh, it's no, it's uh, some bee vomit. <laughs> oh. Puzzling, but he takes it from you and he dips like you see one tentacle kind of dip down and hook up a, a little like little tiny serving of honey. And he, he pulls it up like underneath his tentacles to presumably a mouth, but you haven't seen a mouth there. Um, you can hear this weird like wet smacking sound and it's just delightful. This will suffice as an apology. Thank you. And he walks away. <laughs> oh, I feel okay, thanks, I bye. <laughs> okay, thanks, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other questions? No. Uh, you want a moon card reading before you go? <laughs> I have, here we go let's blow let's blow your mind <laughs> i do not know what a moon card reading is but if it takes longer than but a few minutes probably not unless you wish to see yourselves in space <laughs> starts bubbling <laughs> oh shuffling i'm going around i'd like to ask him if we if it I know it might be doubtful we ever see you again, but should we need assistance from you or, or, or something? Is, is there a way we could reach out to you? He thinks no, and you should not need a reason to call us back. In fact, <laughs> most people here despise our kind and would kill us on sight if they could. I, I I just kind of uh, I look at him and I go, oh, okay, I won't take up any more of your time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and just slowly oh, soak away. <laughs> I, <laughs> poor dude. Oh, uh, I I would let the dread of Vix know that uh, I would just kind of on the way out if we have any uh, visual of the ridge that we went to or we found it. I just point to that ridge and say. Uh, there is more crates, uh, crates near the uh, crash site of uh, the creatures and the uh, crystal there. If uh, there's anything you need to get there before leaving, there should not be anything that remains behind is expendable. Uh, we're unsure as to um, exactly how long the 
the crystal you supplied will last. So we don't want to waste any time that we might have with it. But All right. thank you for pointing this out. So Cradle pulls out a card and she puts it stupidly close to his face. <laughs> you got the expansion card. <gasps> it's got a picture of a lady with the moon. I have and it new says, DLC. I am ready. What? <laughs> Don't, interrupt. <laughs> Don't interrupt the moon card reading. It's very important. It says, I am ready. Thank you. When we're finally ready to spread our wings and fly, feeling gratitude for all that guided us to this moment will help welcome more support for our next journey. <gasps> and she's going to give him a hug. Oh, my God. It's this and very, like, squishy being. Uh, <laughs> so are her wings. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he seems very like uh, puzzled and put off by this hug, and you can feel that the face tentacles pushing you away uh, with more force than his little arms can muster. It's just, yes, um, it, weirdly, your journey. weirdly on on point, um, but also I do not understand your cards. Are they magical in nature? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. And his little, his tentacles are kind of like grasping all over the card and then he hands it back with one and it's just covered in slime. <laughs> She's going to smell it. They're magically accurate. Yeah, they are. Does it smell bad? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's okay, it's got an off-putting odor about it. She's, she's going to go, thank you. Good luck. And she's going to turn to Ilnok and go, can you clean this with your magic fingy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. Thank you. It smells bad. Well, it must sure you. It must smell bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must truly be disgusting. Yeah, so it'll not cleans your card for you. Yeah, put them away. <laughs> <laughs> I love the moon card. It's pretty accurate. They are. They're always like weirdly accurate. Moon cards love D and D. They do. do. Curdle, Ilnock, you guys heading out? Yep. I'm attempting yeah. to. We'll see if I can. Okay. He says, "A uh, large draconian one. Please hang back one second. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Ooh. Secret. <laughs> I'm all for warlock secrets. <laughs> I respect warlock. them so much. <laughs> you mentioned a particular name while we were walking up the stairs. Did you say that on accident, or was that something you meant to say? Hmm. You mean Issa? Uh, you can see like a tremble go through his tentacles. Yes. How do you know that name? Issa. Issa. Great being, seeker among the stars. She is the one who's given me everything. My powers, Tamo, and she points to, you know, Tamo. Mm -hmm. She is my patron. A patron? She's touched you with a sliver of her powers, if I understand things correctly? Yes. Do you happen to know where she is at? No, do you? I am looking for her. Have you seen her? Do you know anything? You see like a, a wave go through his tentacles. He says, no, she's been missing for eons. We <gasps> revere the seeker among the stars. She's you been thought see? of as simply a legend among the, the spacefaring kind. A Do you legend. have any any clues as to her whereabouts? Has she imparted any knowledge to you at all? Um, I have to. I'm looking because I'm trying to remember exactly. <laughs> she has given me glimpses of things. Sometimes I dream of things, but I'm not sure what I'm dreaming. She seems to be trapped. Something or someone is like holding her captive. 
she wants me to help her, but I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure how I am to help her. I've been keeping track of my dreams. She told me they were important to freeing her. And she like pulls out her her special notebook, her special Issa notebook. I've been keeping track of them in here. She gave me this. Oh, and this, and she's gonna pull down like her collar of it and show where uh, Issa had pressed that. I want to call it a seed. Is a seed the right word? It was like a teardrop shape. Yeah, I think she said, um, I can't remember what she said when she did that. Uh, potential, right? Yeah, potential. She also blessed me here. And she points to that spot and said potential when she did so. Interesting. Uh, it, like, he, he's very, very much paying, like, he's, he's, he's really, like, hanging on every word as you, you talk about it. And you can see, like, as he's, as he's listening to you, you can see his tentacles reach out when you show him that that teardrop thing. Uh, you see one almost reach out towards you. And he like pulls back, says, oh, apologies, may I? Hmm. Thanks for a minute. Yes. Yes. If it will help me find Issa, yes. He places one tentacle on it to where like the the tip of the tentacle kind of flattens against that, that teardrop shaped thing that's embedded in you. Um, and similar to like that hum that went through the ship when he put the psi crystal in, you kind of feel like that same hum reverberate throughout you. Um, it's like a, uh, I don't know, say like almost like a radar kind of ping. Like you feel it go through you for a minute and then it disappears. Like it feels like it radiates out towards like your fingers and your toes. And then it comes back in towards that, that spot. He says, this is, this is very peculiar indeed. This is not from here. And I do not know the world in which this originated. Hmm. I know Do that you there... think it's a crystal of some kind? Yes, of sorts. It seems to be an energy crystallized. Uh, it holds a fair deal of power. Um, I wish I could. I wish I had more time to study it. I wish I could learn where it was from, or or. Uh, uh, he seems like flustered and you can see his, his tentacles do like an angry shake almost without his head moving. <laughs> um, one last time, where did you, where, where did it look like she was at when she imparted her information or visuals? Well, the first time. It was like a, it was a wasteland kind of area, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, like a very... There was uh, like nothing there, if I remember right. Yeah, like a really broken landscape. Um, like, it looked like a, a massive earthquake had hit like a, uh, like a dry, rocky area. Um, you know, I cannot remember the name of that place for the life of me well, let me let me find it real quick um the place the, where isa is you mean yeah did, did you have a name for it i i don't think i did but i'm looking at right now to see if i i may not have i may not have said yeah i don't think i had a name um hold on. oh yes all right um so you you described it as um or you were described it as a uh oh let me find it. We all go to space just to figure out Isa. <laughs> 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 That's where spell we end up in spell jammer <laughs> going to look for Isa. And she's secretly the big bad there. Oh, <gasps> oh. 
So yeah, you saw like what looked like a broken, dry, rocky, like almost deserty kind of area yeah, with huge right. like fissures uh, in the ground. You saw um, the gravity defined mountains in the background, kind of hanging like huge mountains, but hanging off the ground, like suspended in the air with these big like rotating like gaseous looking clouds above the mountaintops. Um, you saw some like spires, like twisted uh, rock and what looked like almost maybe like some of these, uh, the tentacles on this nautiloid, like wrapped around these giant spires of twisted rock. Um, you remember seeing some like vents in the ground spewing some kind of gas up in the air. Um, it's very like dreary, um, like a, an apocalyptic feel to it in the, the images that you saw. And then you saw, uh, I think you saw, Oh, I think I do have a name. I didn't think I did, but I found it. Yeah, I do. I totally forgot about it. Blutspur? 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 Blutspur, yeah. Yes. I didn't uh, think I had that, but I did. Okay. Are you telling him the name of it? Yeah, she'll tell him. So, oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I remember now. <laughs> but yeah, she'll tell him the name and what it looked like. Blutspur. Interesting. I can't say I've heard of this place. Do you know it to be a location like a city or more of a planet such as this that we're on? I, I'm i not sure, but I feel as though it must have been the planet, especially seeing as I, I don't remember seeing any city at all in the vision. Interesting. I will, I will look into this. I will, all of my kind would love to find uh, Issa. Uh, yes. I feel yeah. her knowledge would be immeasurable, invaluable to all of us. And I have so many questions for her. Like, where did she go and why? Oh. <gasps> Is um, there a way to contact you again? And she's going to telepathically um, say, perhaps in this manner. He looks kind of taken aback by you real quick. And he says, yeah, it's impressive for someone on this planet in this stage of the primitive evolution. But no, <laughs> I'm afraid this would not reach far enough to contact me. Hmm. Knowing the information you have, though, we may we may visit should we deem it necessary. Excellent. Perhaps we can find East. Perhaps we can. Um, he says, uh, I, f I forget now. Uh, uh, did you mention anything else about what you saw? Um, oh, I would have also told him how she appeared to be like chained i think is the, wasn't she like chained like she was struggling to yep like come forward and something like yanked her back i yeah. would have described that too so she's imprisoned on blood spur this surely sounds uh it gets against her will we must free her i will study on this extensively she sounded weak, like she was having a very difficult time contacting me. So I, I'm a bit worried. As well, it sounds you should be. Well, thank you for this information. Then good luck. Please keep a, a detailed list of any other contact she has with you. It's, if I come back, these notes could prove quite useful in finding her. Oh, yes, I will. And she, like, holds up our notebook. Always. And then uh, he gestures to the door. Um, and about the time that he gestures towards the door, like, you can hear what sounds like this 
like kicking up of that hum, like, like it's just getting louder. Um, he says, um, do hurry. Um, although I wouldn't mind having you around to assist in the search for Issa, I feel as though you do not wish to go with us. Hmm, I think I have things to do here first, but that is very enticing, and I thank you. If and until next time, and he walks away up the stairs. <laughs> All right. <sighs> kind of fun. Unplanned. <laughs> All right. As I have to very carefully move through all the doors. <laughs> so you don't get stuck. Roll 20 is a fucking DP. There we go. I right. made it. Make sure everybody's over here. Uh, everybody but... It. So let's go get his token again. There we go. I think I'm right here with everyone else. No, on the, the next map. Oh. Ew. The outside map. <laughs> Chi is upside down for some reason. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Acrobatics. All right, there we go. Let's bring this down here. Oh my god. <clears throat> what? I'm bumpy. What? I look Where? In shock. I look in shock as I see oh. <laughs> <Get> stuck <laughs> back in. <laughs> <laughs> my mind, it's playing tricks on me. <laughs> oh. It's so sad. I'll 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 give you a pat on the shoulder. Don't worry, we'll figure this out. It's okay, good buddy. That was fun. Uh, wasn't wasn't expecting on that little uh, Isa bit there. So that was fun to do. That's um, always the best when it's been a minute since you had anything come up about your patron, and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. I was I was just enjoy. I was enjoying it second handedly. I, I was just like, oh, that's the best. You're good. You're just over there, buckle tick laughing. <laughs> Your eyes go crazy. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Dude, I have that as my background, man. That is my computer screen background. He's not lying. I love it so much. <laughs> I've actually seen it. It's the best. Um, so it's Okay. All right. So back outside the, the Nautiloid ship, um, you guys climb down <clears throat> um, and you can see all the way around the ship, like all the stuff that's, that's buried in the snow and ice. You can see, like you can feel a warmth coming off the ship now and you can see like puddles of water uh, now growing um, all the way around the outside of it. In fact, when you step down off the ship, it's like a sloshy mess. And you have the idea that if you stay near the ship right now, um, no, we're not Pimble. This isn't Puddlestrom. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you get the idea that if you stay here too long, you might end up uh, stuck in whatever slurries down here. Um, I think monk, we should get away. Uh, quick monk run. All right. And hold up right there for me. All right. Um, so coming down this, this pathway that you guys arrived in, um, you can see a mound of snow. Uh, so it would be like way down, way down this way. You, you see what looks like a mound of snow in the, uh, the middle of the, the path that you guys came in, like this valley. Um, and you see this, this mound of snow look like it gets 
bigger and bigger. Um, giving you the sense that it, this mound of snow is moving towards you. Where is this at? Uh, it'd be up in the northwest coming down this path. Oh, okay. The spiky looking spot? What? Oh, nothing. Never mind. I see what you're talking about. Where we came from? Yeah. yeah this. Just just down here. Just There's not anything on the map to look at at the moment. It's just saying it's you see it from this area, but like off off map. Okay. I was like looking for something. On oh, the- sorry. <laughs> we, we all see it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's kind of hard to miss. <laughs> this looks like a, a large mound of snow um, moving towards you. I'm going to uh, slap Igno since he's next to me. Do you see that? Uh, I just kind of go, oh, oh, oh. and then I, I <laughs> see, yeah, I see it. I see it. <laughs> Why is it moving? I don't know. And then I, I just kind of yell at everyone and go, everybody move. Oh my God. <laughs> God <damn it. laughs> what be it though? So what do you guys first see? It's about 120 feet away. It's moving at a pretty good pace towards you. Everybody ready themselves. See, can we range from the from our distance how big in comparison to all of us it is? Like if it would be a large creature or, or large amount or bigger than that? Uh, the mound that's moving towards you looks like it would be bigger than you. Okay. Cool. Is it is it coming from the west? Northwest. This gives me a worry coming after reading up here. Glacier's Edge. Um, I don't know what's in there, but I hope it 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 uh meets expectations. Um I don't want this. <laughs> All I can think of is children of the corn with the big meat thing. Or not meat. Oh god. The big meat. In a cradle and I said meat. The big dirt <laughs> bomb. <laughs> he wants you too, Malachi. <laughs> you see as it gets closer what looks like a shiny like ridge of some kind sticking out. Looks like so, almost like a shiny rock of some kind barreling towards you. I wonder what that is. I hope it's not what I think it is. I'm I'm just gonna shout out to everybody. Get ready, and I'm just gonna take the dodge action. I have no clue what the hell this is. This is some strange shit. Perhaps we should climb up this path. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wanna be like, yes. get off the ice, but I know Cradle's not that smart. She'd probably be like, get on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'd be grabbing you by the meat flap going, get off the ice. <laughs> yeah. I I I'll be I'll be I'll be your common sense uh captain for today. <laughs> Thank All right. You. Uh, hold up. Common sense, Captain. <laughs> hold up right there. Um, you guys start running away towards this this path here. Um, like the, the thing that's plowing forward towards you under the snow here, like you can see this snow pile getting bigger and bigger. You hear this just monstrous crunch as it breaks through the, the ice in this area and a large creature leaps up towards you and lands oh, in... I love it. I love so it. Why? There we go. It's cute babies. They, they rock. Oh, ah. shit. Ah. <laughs> lands her Hello. right here. Ah. <laughs> Crushes what up, homie? Um, let's see. Oh, I need a, of us. a dex or strength save from everyone that is uh, overlapped oh. by it. Oh, it's right on top of me. Yep. <laughs> 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 Dex oh, save, say. It's on my meat. Okay. 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 They're so Dex cute, save. though. The Langleyers, yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Andy. Yeah. Okay. Would the... Would the Barbarian Danger Sense kick in on this saving throw? Uh, read it or link it in the chat. 
Uh, you oh, uh, deck saving throws against effects that you can see while you're not blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. Against what is it, though? Against effects you can see. Just effects you can see? Yeah. Um, uh, let me look real quick. Danger sense. At second level, you gain the uncanny sense of when things nearby aren't as they should be, giving you an edge when you uh, when you dodge away from danger. You have advantage on... Yeah. Yeah, that'll work for you. Traps or spells. So, okay. Well, such as traps or spells. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I would count this. You can see something coming at you, so... So the question is, do I take advantage on it or do I take a straight plus eight to the roll? Mm. Why would they be... Where, what's your plus eight from? You live dangerously. Because well, you said I could take either a dex saving throw or a strength save. So oh, oh, gotcha. So strength I is plus eight, dex. Which one do I take? Gotcha. Is advantage better or a straight plus eight? Go, go, down, go down the... the straight route with us let's let's see let's see how this goes let's have fun with it you know i do have an inspiration oh there you sure. go. There you go. i guess i could use the inspiration if the plus eight don't work and remember the inspirations work different now oh yeah how are you doing them though so you can wait to see the results before you spend it yeah okay uh and also we're gonna use a little bit of the the new crit rules from uh one D D. um the monster still still can crit against you. I think that's kind of blah that they, as of now in the play test, are unable to crit. So mm-hmm. monsters can still crit, but whenever someone rolls a natural 20 on attack roll, uh, ability check, or saving throw, you will grant the normal like bardic inspiration to uh, yourself or another player. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, cool. that's badass. 13. 13. Uh, that was not going to succeed if you'd like to use your inspiration. Okay. I'm going to use the inspiration. Okay. They can only hold one. God damn it, it's worse. <laughs> All right. So you, no. were, you were trying for a strength save? That was the strength save. And oh, cradle. And- no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I have uh, 11. Cradle, were you trying a strength or a dex? Dex. Dex. Okay. It jumped so, out of the way. So this thing comes shooting up out of the ground like a rocket. It comes slamming back uh, down. Uh, Cradle tried to dodge out of the way and trips on her wings and falls uh, flat as it smashes down. Uh, who else is there? Uh, G was able to dodge to the side. Um, Igna, you were trying to hold your ground and catch it? I. Uh, I guess. I don't know. Or stand up to it. He said save and throw. I thought I was just going to power through it. Okay. You're just trying to power through it. Uh, It's a little stronger than you thought it was going to be. Let's see. Uh, Everybody that failed takes uh, is knocked prone. Yay. Then you take 19 bludgeoning damage and... 18 slashing damage. So that's 37 Ooh. damage total. Wow. Holy balls. Okay, so if I made the save, how much would I? Uh, uh, that was a lot. Take Sorry. no damage. No damage from that one? No. Okay. So let's see. Holy crap. Igna is prone. Oh, my back. Cradle is prone. My neck. My back. Uh Oh, here he goes. Pretty sure I didn't have those. (laughs) Not going any further. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Andy, would I still have that two temp HP from that last fight we did before we came back, or would that be long gone? Oh, that's what the two was? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you you can use that up. Okay. Let's see. Successful save, creature takes... Oh, no. Sorry. Successful save, you take half damage. So, 36. Uh, you take 18. 18? Okay. Yeah. And you are pushed five feet out. So, I'm going to knock you out this way. What the... Minus 18. There we go. <laughs> my neck, my back, hit by a bullet sack. <laughs> Um, okay. 
Uh, so now I need uh, initiative from everyone as uh, this this blood is smashed down amongst your party. Bullet, <laughs> bullet. This is totally random. <gasps> oh no. Girl, it yeah. came from the area that we had everything parked at. Bum, bum, bum. No! <laughs> Garrow 24. Oh, really? really? Igna 12. Okay, fine. A roll of five. A. Why is Igna not in here? God damn it. Edit. Oh, Ursula, look at you. Oh, damn. Wait, why do you have two? That's for Tamo. <laughs> oh, Tamo. I got a 10. Tamo was a badass. Good going, Tamo. <laughs> Not in my house. <laughs> get, get, get out of my house. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. my house. This is my house. This is all my house. Leave me alone. 24. Cheers. <laughs> James, 10. I rolled low. Ursula. I ro- Soup's low. Where's Ursula? 14 for Ursula. 14? Wait, 14. 10? Wait, what? You have okay, two in roll there. 20 rolled like multiple times. Yeah. So the first one was 14. Ignore that 10. Okay, 14 for Ursula. And then 21 for Tam. Uh, Ilnok is 10. Oh, things are falling. I don't know why. Cradle. It's 16. Okay. Uh, he's got a roll initiative. <laughs> Big old fat tube. Yeah. Yeah. And Igna was an 18. Okay. There we go. And then I'll add in... Uh, Tamo. Uh, Tamo token, where are you? Did there we you not are. rest? We did not. I don't think so, because we went well, like... I, I I took a short rest. I took a short rest on the on the way back from our cave fight with those mutants. Oh, and that's no. when I... And that's when that weird little uh, crystal telepathy thing kicked in. There we go. Moment. Uh, Garo, you are up, followed by Tamo, then Igna. Oh, so I'm not now. I will say, how rude. Get off my friends. And then I will start chattering at it and cast um, Dissonant Whispers. Okay. Ooh. Hold on one second. Someone just came in. So maybe go to the next person. What? (laughs) What? (laughs) Someone just walks in. Lock the door. Yeah, hold on. I'll be back. All right. That's weird. On a Sunday? And at 5.30 on a Sunday? On Memorial, on Labor Day weekend? Yeah. Yeah. That just ain't right. I need harvest <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Um, so, Tamo then. Tamo can go. I, I need strings. <laughs> oh. Yay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. back. did you kick him out? Yeah. Did you lock the door? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a random person? Oh, no, it was my dad. Oh, okay. okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. So you kicked him out? <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> I think he's leaving right now. I think he was just dropping stuff off. Gotcha. Um, more bonus food. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to cast it at. <laughs> what? Jake would be proud. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> no, no. I'll cast it at uh, second level. And he has to make a, let's see, a wisdom saving throw of 16. Wisdom saving throw. I bet he's not very wise. Um, how much? Uh, 16. Yep, that's a fail. Cool, then he takes full damage. Okay. Um, so he'll take, uh, I will roll damage. He takes uh, 15, that's it. Oh, I guess that's it, yeah. 15 psychic damage. Okay. And then he has to use his uh, reaction to move his full movement away from me. 
All right. That's, oh, yikes. That's 40 feet. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh, damn. Are. Right? He is scared of the kitty. Well, he's not He's not scared. But 40. Okay. 40 feet away. Do I, do I get a punch on the way out? I, uh, you know what? I'll oh, say yes. Too. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> All righty. So, Cradle, you should be prone. Why are you not prone? If there, I was going to say that if you're prone, okay, well, can you still do it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I would get one too then. Yeah, just just punching at the leg. Yeah, they're all smacking from the ground. <laughs> they're like laying. Yeah. I'll say smacking. I'll, I'll say you guys can have them at disadvantage being on the ground and all. Uh, question: Would it be? Is it exactly you said a punch at the leg, or is it like, like arm strike, or would it be? Can you mm. use your actual weapon attack? No, 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 you can use a weapon attack. Oh, eh, I'll stick with my punchy. <laughs> uh, okay, I keep on... I'm trying to uh, make an attack with the staff that I got. Uh, but it keeps, it keeps bringing up the... I want to say we've run into that before, and it's because of how I made it, and I need to fix it. And if you remind me tomorrow while I'm working on all the other Damn. stuff, I will try to get that fixed for you. Uh, okay. let me check real fast, just to be sure. And uh, GU. <laughs> I, I know it too. should be. I'm yeah, cray cray. It's doing the same thing. Cray cray. Awesome. Yeah, so just roll uh your your D twenty, and then add the okay. plus nine to it. Yeah. Okay. Give me that D20. Right, Give me that so. D20. <laughs> oh, uh, 18 plus 9. 27. Alrighty. So that'll, that'll hit. That'll be a, D, a D8 plus 6 for 11. 11 damage. Magic. Magic bludgeoning. Okay. Magic bludgeoning. Yeah. I should update this. All right. Uh, Cradle, did you do yours at disadvantage? Yeah, and it was still 17. Okay. I rolled higher. Um, eight points of damage. Eight points. Rocking. With my slimy fist. Ew. <laughs> All right. Sally slime fist over here. That queef fist. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. God. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Did uh, I- 18 hit it? 18, yep. Okay. <laughs> so weird that it does this. So, looks like 13 damage? 15. Or actually, no, just 13. Yeah, you weren't raging yet. Yeah, the plus two wouldn't trigger in yet. Okay. Yep. 13 damage. Whoops, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, Did anyone else hear an echo just now? Yeah. yeah. It's been happening. I think it's Matt because his little icon keeps lighting up. That's weird. Okay. So, Matt, it's your turn. So, you don't not have to, to mute there. Ignis turn. I'm still prone, so I still have to stand up. Yep. Is my entirety of my movement. Half your movement. Oh, it's only half? Yep. Oh, that's weird. Because the, the conditions actually say that I, it's the only thing I can do is stand up or... All right, so half, so I can still... Hmm. Um... I'm going to Okay. I'm going to spend half my movement to stand up. So it's still 20. And then I'm going to where is it? 
Where is this stupid thing? What are you trying uh, to find? No, I was just trying to find the goring rush to see if I could do that. All right, oh, so gotcha. I'm going to spend half my movement to stand up, which leaves me with 20 feet left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the dash action and use the remainder of my 20 feet to dash 40. Yep. Does that work? Okay. Yeah. So that gets me right to him which I will then use a bonus action to do hammering horn. No, it would just be a melee attack as with my horns as a bonus action. So it wouldn't be hammering horns because that's if I'm still next to them. All right, so I'm going to do a horn attack. Don't you have... 30, 20. Ooh! Noise. So you Goring rush. Yeah, after you use the dash action, you turn move at least twenty feet. You can make one melee attack yeah. with your horns. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So dirty twenty is gonna hit for a total of seven damage. Okay. But let me see if this thing triggers. I don't think it does. She gave me something a while back that may pork pork. Andy, what was that magic thing? That brooch? Uh oh, beast beast brooch. Yeah, yeah, the beast brooch. That's weird. Didn't this require attunement? Beast fury. Doesn't look like it. That's weird. I thought it did. Okay. Yeah, plus one bonus yeah. to attack and damage rolls. With unarmed strikes and natural weapons. So yeah, that would uh, add an additional yeah. one in there. Okay, so that's an extra one. And this attack doesn't cause him to move, because it's not my it's not hammering horns. So an okay. extra plus one from that. Okay. And that will be the end of my turn, unless I get a second bonus action. Uh, no, no, you do not. No, I tried. <laughs> Although, Whoops. I guess I could... Actually, give me one second. Give me one more second, because maybe I will... Oh, I don't have action search. Okay, never mind. Can okay, carry on. All right, the uh, Cradle, you're up, followed by Ursula and Ilnok. So I'm prone, so half movement to get up. Yep, yep. Oh... Okay. These squares are five feet, right? Correct. Okay. I'm going to get up. As far as I can go, I'm going to stick my fingy in my belly button and disappear. <laughs> Wait, let me double check. I didn't already use this. <laughs> oh, I did. Okay, I can't disappear. <laughs> I'm going to turn into a lump of snow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It'll be obvious, but she doesn't think so. Okay, you are a lump of snow. Guys, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In, quick question. Would I have been able to do my extra attack there as well? Uh, what is the, uh, stipulation for extra attack? Oh, no, because it wasn't... It wasn't the attack action. It was the attack action. It was a bonus attack that I used to do the action. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, never mind. Carry on. Um, yeah, you're, you're disguised as a lump of snow. There you go. Is that it for you? Yep. All right. Ursula. <laughs> the snow is tiefling known to man. Oh, <laughs> what is she doing? Oh, what actually, is she doing? Ursula, we screwed something up. Uh, Tamo should have went after Garrow. That's okay. Um, for his turn, I wasn't going to have him do much anyway. I'm just going to have him stay by me, so I didn't say anything. Okay. Um, Ursula is going to glare at the bullet and cast Mind's Liver. 
All right. Is it an intelligence save? It is. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, I started choking. <coughs> Excuse if, me. If this doesn't land, you are absolutely cursed, okay? This, this yeah. thing has a negative four. I figured it would probably be dumb. Oh my god. Uh, it's a three total. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did it do that? There, there it goes. Uh, there. Six damage. Wow, that's really shitty. But also, um, for his next saving throw, before the end of my next turn, he get 1d4 subtracted, whatever it is. Uh, saving throw? Yes. Subtract uh, 1d4 from the next saving throw it makes before the end of your next, so before the end of my next turn. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, you'll have to remember that because even with that that icon there, since it doesn't mean the same thing, I'll probably forget. Buck. Anything else for you? Movement or anything? I don't think I need to move. Okay. Um. So I'll probably just stay where I'm at. Cool. Uh, it'll knock you up. Then G U and the bullet. All right. So oh, I see this bad. thing just like <laughs> jump out and flatten a couple of our teammates. Yep. Um. Ooh. All right, there we go. So I'm going to step over here next to GU and say, go Terminator mode. And I'm going to put haste on him. Oh. Ooh. All right. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. So you oh. get a bonus plus two to AC and uh, extra attack. Oh. Wow. I'm rocking a 24 right now. Jesus. I can hear, I can hear James's boner from here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. His 24 boner. <laughs> Just stretching and growing. Oh, oh 24. He's, he's pulling. <laughs> oh, we got Warforged Pinocchio over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I want to be a real boy. <laughs> oh god. Okay. All right. Anything else for you, Ilnar? <clears throat> One, two after that. <laughs> Ilnar? Oh, I said no, that's going to be it. I must have hit mute. Sorry. Okay. You're good. <laughs> Ilnar is spent. Uh, <laughs> GU. <laughs> Haste and oh GU. Oh my god. Oh, one oh one yeah. I, I forgot to say your uh, movement is actually doubled as well. Oh my oh god. My god. Oh. Oh. So oh. He's gonna Sorry. pre. I, I, I'm gonna pre. pre uh, uh, okay, okay. So <laughs> seeing this, you just kind of see steam like blow off from my joints, and I just fucking. <laughs> just like fucking start, uh, is there room on the opposite on the opposite side of the bullet uh, opposite of uh, uh, Igna yeah uh, so can, uh, if you guys are fine with it I'll just move everything over one because there's yeah, there's no more room on the map over there but there would be space behind it yeah it looks good all right. yeah I'm sure you guys okay. are all, all you ranged people are complaining about the thing moving one closer right Alrighty, so all right. If I already have two normal attacks, would just put one more in the mix there? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, you might first, use the uh, flurry too. First guy. Oh, don't don't you worry, man. Sky blinder. <laughs> oh, with advantage. Okay, okay. So it. it fucking let me do it okay 18 for the first hit so what's actually more screwed up is if if i'm reading haste right uh let's see it gains an additional action on each of its turns the action can be used only to take the attack dash disengage hide or use an object action so uh, yeah i guess you would get one i, th I was gonna think that it, it gave you another uh, extra attack but i don't think that works because you still would only have one bonus action yeah. Okay. Uh, so 18 uh, does hit it and make sure you're... Oh, yeah, you did it at advantage. Cool. Yep, 18 hits it. 
All right, that's the first one. Okay. I'm just going to roll to see if they all hit, and then I'll start rolling the damage. Actually, what did you do uh, different? Why is it displaying that attack properly this time? That one is just because I uh, did the right-click advantage thing. Uh, when I tried doing hitting a single the first time, it just kept bringing up the description of it. Huh. Well, it works. Yeah, it's weird. But a uh, second attack. Uh, I'm hasted. I'm so hasted right now. You don't even know. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. A third uh, Skyblinder staff attack. Oh my god. This is so fucking ridiculous. Uh, 17 for that one. Still hits, just barely. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll roll the damage on uh, those first three. Okay. Uh, so the first one is... Just those first three. Nine. Uh, bludgeoning for that one. Okay, we got nine. Then uh, 13 bludgeoning. 22 that, total. The second one. And then... Uh, uh, 10 bludgeoning for that one. 32 total. <laughs> I'm going to spend a key point. He's going to key. <laughs> I'm going to key. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to punch this bastard twice with my flurry of blows. Okay. Uh, 25. 25 hits. Punch. And then for the second punch, uh, 23 for the second punch. Also hits. Alrighty, so the first punch would give me uh, six bludgeoning. We're at 38. It's hitting some shardo levels. And uh, then 11 bludgeoning. 49 damage. And you just kind of see, like, just, like, steam, like, just, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, you remember, if, if anybody's seen Attack on Titan, the, the weird armor oh, Titan, when yes. it kind of does that weird unlock, and you see the fucking, oh, like, steam. fire steam spade out? Yeah. Yes. Like, that's happening because of that fucking kick-ass haste. Thank you, Ilnock. Holy crap. <laughs> I've only been dreaming about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just, and you guys see this that, blur. That turn. Uh, take off over towards the bullet and just a well I was going to say flurry but that's actually you know flurry of blows what he was doing it's just like cartoon style speed streaks as he just pummels the shit out of this thing uh, combination of staffs and unarmed strikes punches and kicks uh, yeah uh, it looks pretty rough now G you did a number on it um, thank you Alnock. but it's not dead so it gets to go which is not a robot <laughs> um let's see it is That's great going to see it's gonna bite at the one directly in front of it first um yeah mouse there we go uh 13 to hit you igna probably nope. not okay then it wheels around to bite at the uh, the one that was just pummeling its ass oh yeah uh, 17 to hit does not hit you. Misses. Then it... <laughs> oh my god. Uh, immediately burrows down into the snow and... Oh no. Moves. Is that an opportunity attack? Um... Yeah. Yeah, I'll say so. Okay. Would this be an advantage for both of us because we're both flanking it simultaneously? Or sure would be. Normal? Okie dokie. <gasps> Just wanted to ask. You're good. Assuming the 17 hits it? Just barely. 26. Four, 13 bludgeoning. 14 and 13. Uh, one damage over what you needed to kill it. So it, it starts to burrow immediately. Um, and she used start going to town on it again, punching the shit out of it. And then uh, Igna just swipes across under that. You see it's, well, you can't see it right now. Uh, boop. Uh, you see that like 
headpiece that goes back there, when it's got its head down, like trying to hurry up and burrow away, you stab down with your nine lives stealer sword, get it right underneath that that head, that like Ooh. armored head plate thing right at the base of its skull. And it, it stops, like its, its head is halfway into the hole that it dug and the rest of its body is just limp in the snow now. Uh, oh. I'd, like to, I'd like to proceed. Wow. Kick the shit out of it. <laughs> oh my god. Don't land on me, you stupid monster thing. And I'm just everyone can carry on doing whatever they're doing. I'm just kicking the shit out of it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Armoring wanted to go to space, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, you saw my uh, response to you, right? Huh? You saw my response to you about the space thing, right? I did. Okay. Just making sure. He's conflicted, so he's just but it's right there and probably couldn't. He just keeps kicking this thing and there's like a hole in its body and just like you know, mush at this point because he's just laying into this thing as it kicks. I was really. I tag her shoulder as I run by super fast. <laughs> that <laughs> was interesting. What's up, Chrissy? Oh, nothing. I just said I was really glad it wasn't a Remoraz. Remoraz, yeah. Oh, fuck those things. Get How it are out you of here. I'm supposed to say that. Remoraz, Remoraz. It's weird. It's some crazy shit. One of those things. It's a Remoraz. Yeah. Remoraz. Ramrod. All right. <laughs> what are you guys doing now? You've got this, the ship back here appears to be powering up. Like even the, uh, the ice all the way up to Ilnok and GU has started melting and it's getting kind of slushy over by you guys. Um, uh, you got the, the dead bullet sticking out of the ground. Uh, what would, what would you guys like to do? Um, oh no. Should we check Jaws. Completely open, staring at Igna, mashing the crap out of this thing as she's looking like a pile of snow. <laughs> <laughs> I I would I would look at the group and I'd say that came from the direction the cart and all our axe beaks are. We should probably see if uh, <gasps> everything's still intact or not. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, the mound of snow starts running in a pink blur. <laughs> I hear I, I, I hear you say that, and I just go buck whack. So, <laughs> little I like penis. To, I like to take my sword and I cut off a piece of its belly real quick, like a strip of its belly, oh, and God. run to the rest of the party. And I toss the belly strip to Garrow and I say, "Here's for your jerky." And <laughs> running, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> oh. Wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> Is it this Thank way? You so much. I'll, I'll I'll use the last of that haste and I'll. Uh, Try to see if I can uh, see the card off in the distance to see if it's uh, uh, all right from our vantage or not. All right, so you guys, you guys are a little ways away from the card, but you know, I gotta find the uh, I gotta find the map again. Uh, back. I'm gonna tinkle. God damn it! The, I loaded the map up, and the very first thing I see in huge letters is just ass. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all of you. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Right under Icewind and Icewind Dale, it was just big Icewind letters Dale. that said ass. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Asswind. It's, it's supposed Asswind to be Icewind Dale. <laughs> Duh, Andy. Pay hey. attention to the lore. <laughs> I hate you all. What the fuck? We're supposed to be a hate free group, and yet I hate you all. <laughs> It's all right. Jacob hates us all, too. This is true. All right. I love haste. Thank you, Illinois. <laughs> yeah. So on your guys' way up here, uh, the haste wears off, and you were hit oh, yeah. with a wave of uh, robot sleepiness. <laughs> You're overcharged. I never felt like this before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Factory mode reset. Yeah, you guys are all on the the map, right? 
like world map of Icewind Dale. Um, yeah, I see no. you. Yes, there it goes. I'm upside down on a mountain. Yeah, he was there oh. because we were using him to track where you. Uh, oh, where you guys yeah, were trying to find little, the crystal. The weird little clicky thing a ding. Yeah, that and uh, when you were following the bird. Oh, oh yeah, the owl. Yeah. <laughs> that was really smart. So we can get rid of this stuff. But we were smart. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it takes a little while, um, to get back and maybe about five minutes down the path, like after G use, uh, caught his breath in a manner of speaking, um, you guys can hear this, this really loud sound, uh, behind you coming from the direction of the nautiloid. You hear this like, and you can see something large with a uh, floppy tentacles just take off into the sky. Um, it it gets up. Like it's it's kind of this weird like perpetual like twilight until it gets like dark dark here. So it you can see it for a minute in the twilight before it just disappears into the blackness of the sky. Um, he, he lingers Cradle. for a minute. Go ahead. Cradle glances and says expansion. Fly free. And then goes back to clock and running. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh her her card. Yeah, her moon card. Uh, <laughs> expansion. <laughs> you uh, peeked yourself out, though, when you yelled. I'm not sure what you yelled. Oh, cluck. Oh, cluck. Why? <laughs> cluck. <laughs> um, the moon cards are super cool, though. I just want to say. That's yeah, that's accurate. nuts, man. Holy that was crap. pretty accurate. Um, yeah, so people that are listening, Melissa randomly just pulls a card yep. and, it, and it always says, pertains to exactly what we're doing. It's pretty cool. Frighteningly <laughs> accurate readings from the thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll be. It's mag- magically accurate somehow. <laughs> somehow. Oh, magical. Oh, magical. <laughs> That's okay. Hero looks in awe at the ship taking off with a mouthful of bullet. <laughs> You're eating it raw instead of making jerky? I was hungry. I'm, eating some of, I'm just eating some of it. I'm just like, whoa, with bullet flesh hanging out. <laughs> okay. Bullet flesh seems like it would be like, just like, oh, super high in protein. Like, holy fuck, that's filling. Bullet it's flesh happening. is my next band name. <laughs> bullet flesh. Bullet flesh. Exactly. Um, okay. So, um, after you guys hear and watch the, uh, the Nautiloid take off and go presumably back into space, um, you trudge along, uh, the same path that you followed, uh, where you left the, uh, the cart and log and all of the, uh, axe beaks. <clears throat> and I don't know if some of you would be surprised, maybe, but you see log, uh, standing on top of the wagon. The he has the wagon pulled up a little ways, like up the side of um, this this mountain here. It's not very high, but it, it's just up up enough on the rock. Um, it, it, he's he's got like one hand like shielding his eyes for some reason because it's like almost nighttime, like it's almost pitch black instead of just twilight. Um, but he says, "Look out! There's something in the snow." Log, Log, you're okay. I thought you were dead. I run up and give him a big old hug. Log, not dead. Big thing under snow. Tried to get bears. Log, pull up on the mountain. Oh, you did a good job. Bears. I, I, I've got some of. Oh, we killed the thing. Here, here, have a bite of it. It's, it's quite tasty. It Was killed, there only one? Killed big thing. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. Huh. See. See, it's in my mouth. <laughs> Takes a big big bite out of the piece you handed him. Says, oh, big thing's tasty. Yeah, you did a good job. You, you saved you saved our cart. You saved the animals. Oh, good job, Lug. Yes, Lug done well. Manifest. Urs- Ursula, you make a good point. Uh, Lug, was, was it just, did you just see one creature in the snow or were there more? Hmm. Lug, Lug see only one. Okay. And uh, G will just kind of walk around the area just to see if there's any more of those little like uh, 
uh, Bugs Bunny tunnel looking things. But uh, if it seems to be, I don't know, if anything seems a bit more uh, more out of the ordinary or something like that. Um, sorry, I was reading the next part. Uh, can you repeat that, please? Oh, uh, uh, af- after hearing that it was probably just one, uh, G would just kind of walk around the perimeter, just kind of see if there's any weird uh, uh, ditch-looking indentations uh, around the area and just see if we can get a head count of all the axe beaks. <laughs> um, so the, the axe beaks are all there. They're all fine and accounted for. Um, cool. For looking for like the... You're looking for like where it was digging, right? Like to see if it yeah, left some kind see. of tunnel or something. Uh, roll a survival check to see if you can find anything out here. Survival. I'll be Do right back. I have, to go, I have to go write my name in the snow real quick. I'll be back. <laughs> Do it. Nope, I rolled a seven. Nah, on here. everything just it's it's just kind of uniformly white all over the ground here with all the snow and ice. So you, you don't really see anything that sticks out like that. Do those things exist uh, in Eberron at all? Or is this like totally like a totally new experience? Um, this would be a new experience for GU because it doesn't right. really remember much about where he came from. So yeah, this would be a, a whole new kind of creature for him. I'll just kind of walk back to the group and say, I have no clue what that was, but that was a really interesting creature. I think it's a metal gopher. What the fuck? <laughs> Ursula is like drawing it in her notebook. Because I don't think she's seen one. I don't think so, right? No. We haven't seen a bullet before? No, you guys saw one in the Goblin campaign, but not on here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, Ursula's wow. going to be like, what an interesting creature. And she's drawing it. Also, uh, uh, G would apologize to the group about uh, how he was kind of acting a little weird back at the cave. Hmm. I don't know that I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Earthful was too obsessed with everything else that was happening. That was no, yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> Riddle did. She's just going to pat your hand lightly. There, there. <laughs> you might have a booger on you, but she's comforting you. <laughs> Might have a, a booger on you, but she meant well. Thanks. I I, I, uh, I pat her on the back and uh, hopefully I uh, can uh, wipe uh, any boogers off on the... <laughs> <laughs> I love that we have to say shit like that. Yes. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> Cradle be gross. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, well... Since Tumpy's in the rock, who's going to drive? I, I can drive it, but I don't know. The last time I drove it, uh, well, Lug, you were there. We <laughs> had that big run in. Oh. Though, though, though we were up all night. So I th- you I want think Cradle we'll to drive? <laughs> I'll drive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you know what you 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 guys uh, you guys get well acquainted back with your uh, axe beaks. I'll drive for you, and uh, yeah. Hi, and, Lord. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we don't want the toddler driving. No, <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, my God. But what if sorry? <laughs> what if Cradle really wants to drive? She can drive her axe. You know what? Okay. You know what? No, no, no. you know what? Okay. I would okay. I would have her uh, ride shotgun, and I would teach her what I know of uh, driving the cart, and then every couple miles have her drive it. <laughs> and I would, and I, 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 I would help. I'm teaching you to drive, basically. You put your arms around me like the scene in Ghost. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just passing the reins off to you. It's, it's not just, like you have to be right behind somebody. No. Just tormenting you, James. I'm an evil Thanks, person. I appreciate okay. it. So you're not evil. You are trying to drive this wagon. Well, where are you driving it to? Oh yeah. Okay. That, so, that's kind of important to know. <laughs> Alrighty. So what what was it that we? Uh, oh, uh, did you guys want to 
tried the Goblin Stronghold uh, to the far west area. We get back on the trail and head to Red Rum <coughs> or the Red Rum. Red Rum. Uh, I, yeah, I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Also, before we we do this, I think we should probably um we might want to split up that it. that loot. The two laser guns, the monocle. Oh. Lug. Oh, yes. So you have uh, two laser pistols. The actual <laughs> item. Laser pistols. I don't know who wants the laser pistols. I kind of want the slug if no one wants. Ew, It'll be so all right if I held on thing? to the monocle. Yeah. So, that's up to you guys. I've had it. All righty. And, you know, if worse was worse, we can always just kind of like, you know, just kind of share, like pass back and forth if anybody else wants to make anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I might have uh, I might have uh, said the wrong thing there for the making things. I thought it did one thing and it was a different one. Uh, it's more really. more for finding things. Um, oh, finding okay. things? Yeah. So would it be like, oh, this is like, you want a perception check? Here you go, bucko. Yeah. So this, uh, the let me, let me make sure I got the right one. Uh, the metal monocle with kaleidoscopic lenses. Lenses. Um. So you can just call them the eyes of minute seeing. Um, eyes. It says it functions like those, but it's a. Uh, Here, I can uh, see the display area on VTT. There we go. Bloop. Eyes of minute seeing. These fit over the. Oh, sorry. These do not require attunement. <laughs> oh, what can I? We can just pass them about, you know, if anybody's on. Uh... That's cool. Yeah. The other item will need uh, to be identified or attuned to. What other item? The slug or yeah. the guns? Slug. Let me see. If I... <laughs> Did anybody else want the slug? Does any, did anybody care about the slug? No, I, mean, I think it's cute, was... but I'm not smart enough this? to use it. <laughs> what does the slug do again? You don't know yet. Like you... No. Well, outside of. Uh, the little bit that... Yeah, uh, what was the, the description that he said it did? Sorry, Chrissy, go ahead. Uh, um, the slug lets you read thoughts from people around you and possibly implant ideas into others. It seemed like it fit Earth a little. That's why I like, Maybe cool. I would take it if nobody wants it. Yes, please, you take that, so that thing is nasty. Caesar, did you want the slug? Do you really want Cradle giving you guys ideas on devil worshippers? <laughs> I guess that's true, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Ur- Ursula knows better than that. <laughs> true. Ooh. Ooh, wait. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, G, uh, G would actually bring these over to Ilmok. These, uh, these eyes of minute seeing. Yeah? Uh, saying that, uh, you know, this... You seem like they would take... Uh, you should uh, need the eyes of a very intelligent person. And um, you seem to fit that description, bud. And I'll just kind of hand it over. Thank you. Me. Here, hold on. Let me... as, soon as, as soon as I added it to my equipment, I was like, wait a second, this shit would be perfect for Ildok. What am I doing? There we go. Is that all we got was a slug and a monocle? Two laser guns. What's a laser gun? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so there are there are special rules to using uh, technology that you have no idea uh, as to what they do. Um, so let me find. I'm excited to see who gets the laser gun. Yeah, you guys can choose who gets it. 
Um, uh, don't give one to me. You know better. <laughs> yeah. You should know I after could, the butt scratcher incident. I, I could hang on to one and then, you know, at one point be like, everybody stay away from me just in case. And I just like shoot a tree or super <laughs> shoot. Or I don't know. Does Have the robot come out, do it. Something comes out of one end then. I'm a test dummy. He said it was sort of like my crossbow, so it must shoot something. Oh. Ooh. No, wait, no. I already asked this question at one point. Never mind. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we'd have to, to decide who was going to take the laser pistols and if you're going to try to use them or not. I'd like to try one out. Okay, so I'll take us. I'll take the second one to take a look at it. But. Okay. Um, so what this is is these will be considered. Let's see. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to use alien technology and how like how it works. Uh, you must succeed on a number of intelligence checks based on the complexity of the item. Uh, two successes for a simple item such as a lighter, a calculator, a revolver. Four successes for a complex item such as a computer, chainsaw, or hovercraft. I want to put these as a three. They're more complex than a calculator or a revolver, but less complex than like a whole computer or hovercraft. So um, you guys will need uh, three successes, um, just a straight intelligence check to figure out exactly what these are, how they work. Um, even if you do figure them out, I don't believe any of you are proficient in firearms, correct? No. No. Okay. So you will not be proficient with it, which just means you wouldn't add your proficiency bonus to any attack rolls made with it. Okay. Yeah. Should I roll uh, an intelligence check? Yeah, if you're trying to, to mess with it right now and figure it out, go ahead. Yeah. I'll have you keep track of your successes and failures like you would if you were working on something else. Okay. All right. Uh, I I think it comes out of this end. That is one success. Are you on them all right now? Uh, no, this will just be over the course of... Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? Sure. Go ahead. And, and I, I think it, uh, I think you hold it like this, baby. Uh, does oh, this no. look right, GU? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay. So the five, that's a failure. So mark down one yeah. failure. <clears throat> uh, mark down one charge used, and you have a disadvantage on your next check. And as you're you're like flipping it around, um. You unknowingly and accidentally hit the trigger and a like blasting or a, a glaring white blast comes from the end of the gun. Ooh. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I was holding that completely wrong. Was was it aimed at anybody by accident? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe on a one, but not uh not with that okay. one. <laughs> oh my god. Do you want to keep going? I just rolled my disadvantage oh. roll. Okay. Oh. It didn't come up. Oh, there did it? No. It was a six. Uh, so you spin it around the other way. Maybe it shoots from this then. <laughs> it fires off, uh, just <laughs> narrowly, narrowly missing a lug. Um, he ducks down as it goes by. What are you doing? Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have this. Uh, and again, you use up another charge and you have disadvantage on your next check. <laughs> oh my. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I should keep going. This, uh... Uh, may, maybe, maybe we can stop for today and we can visit, revisit it tomorrow. And uh, that's I, I a should... really interesting item. Uh, uh Igna, do you think you would have better luck with this, or uh, or 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 somebody else? Uh... Give the wizard a gun. Oh yes, Ilnok. Yes, 
<laughs> Ilnok. Ilnok Vaz in Wizard with a Gun. I actually, meant to, like I actually meant to say Elnok first, but then Igna just popped in. I, I laughed pretty good at Igna. I was like, yes, the Minotaur with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so I heard my name originally, and I was like, well, I got a little excited because I'm like, well, I get to try it. And then I hear Elnok say that, and I go, Oh, oh. <laughs> I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd walk. I'd, I lumber away in, in just in general. I would, I would, I would stop you and I say, Hey, there's something behind your ear. And I, I do a sleight of hand and uh, pull. The, <laughs> oh God. And I pull the alien gun from behind your ear. Jesus. <laughs> 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 hey, you have some behind your ear. Is it gold coin? No, it's a fucking weapon. No, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Gu that has like see it as I I know what this is, and I know how fickle it is because I just saw Garo shoot it twice on accident, and I look at Gu that has this gun <laughs> to my head and they just go, and now you want to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would be, I would be holding it to where the handle would be pointing towards you, not the barrel. I I don't know this. I take, okay. I literally, I take off running and I dash it, into the woods. Into I, the new bunch of woods. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put it in the bag of holding and until you want to use it. Sorry. Fun with fire come back. I, I, I ran away. Back. Cradle's dumb, and she's like, oh, Igna's running in the woods again. I may need to oh, boop no. him in the butt with my stick again, so she's gonna <laughs> run out in the woods like she did that one time. Oh, God. <laughs> if anybody remembers that but me. <laughs> yeah, I do. I remember that. <laughs> a little bit. So, Ilnok, uh, here, here, maybe you could give it a go. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Um, Andy, would the eyes of my newt seeing help in this? Uh, oh. I'll say they're not... It wouldn't really by default because it's not an investigation check, but I'll say... Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give you like a plus two on on a roll, the first roll for uh, trying to figure it out. That's just a... Okay. <laughs> Oh shit! All righty, Natty. So, uh, yeah, you're using your your newfound uh, little kaleidoscope lens thing, and you're checking it out. Um, so, after watching uh, the other one stumble about with this thing and nearly murder a log with it, uh, you discern that the weird little thing hanging off the bottom is a trigger mechanism, and by pulling back on it, it sends one of those bright blast of light out the uh, the business end. Um, you have advantage on your next check. Sweet. Great. <laughs> that one's not so good. Or not as good, but it's still decent. 17. Wow. So that's another success. Sweet. Yeah. You have now discerned the trigger mechanism and the... Uh, uh, the business end. Um, yeah. So you can keep going if you want. I just realized that I'm rolling investigation because that's what I originally thought. And you said intelligence, so I'm dumb. Well, um, the, it's still a 20, but the, the other one would be uh, still the same. Leave, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, it would be plus four instead of plus seven. So all right. So that would make a difference. Uh, yeah. So that one, that one would be a failure. All right. So I'll roll intelligence this time. Okay. <laughs> ah, it's the same thing. Uh, the second failure. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to be like, hmm, I thought I had it, but maybe I'll try again later. All right. So at this point, um, you guys have spent some time like messing around with these these laser pistols. Ilnok has a pretty decent idea, um, kind of, like the general idea of it. You haven't figured out the specifics. Don't really know what it does if it hits somebody or um, you know, like what what it takes or uses. 
uh, to shoot out of this thing. Cause like you guys are used to like bows and crossbows. Like you put a projectile in, you trigger it and then the projectile goes out up till now you haven't put anything in it, but something definitely comes out of the other end. Um, so you can spend the night like kind of tinkering with these and, and getting them figured out. Um, Ursula, if you took the, um, the weird slug thing, um, are you attuning to that overnight? You're okay. So this thing is, uh, it's a, like I said, a slimy coif. Cause I'm going to say it one last time, um, <laughs> that you would wear around your neck. And it functions like a helm of telepathy. So if you want to just add helm of telepathy yeah. to your uh, inventory and you can just change the name of it to slimy coif <laughs> or Sounds so gross. telepathy space log or something, you can. Sweet. Yeah, that. <laughs> There you go. The item card. Am I dumb? <gasps> bites, bites tongue. I. Hmm. Never. The um. Maybe I'm not signed in. Maybe that's the problem. I couldn't manage my stuff. I think it's because it signed me out. Oh, I think they did something last week. Like an update or something. Because I had to sign back in for the first time in forever. Okay. I think that's what was wrong. I'm like, why can't I manage my stuff? Okay, I got it now. Yes, that's what it was. All right. So you guys, um, you can spend the night like tinkering around with things and uh, attuning your items. Uh, you guys can have a long rest. And then um, we'll end it there in this episode there. Um, so then you should all be thinking about where you're going to next, which you have, I think one, uh, one objective in mind that you have circled in a rather large, uh, yeah, yeah, that over there. <laughs> Andy. I, I feel like I should see something else, but I'm zoomed way far in, so maybe I don't see it. No, I'm just laughing about the massive circle. Yeah. Gobbos. Okay. <clears throat> so, I assume you guys will be heading there next, or trying to make your way there? I think so, right? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. Cool. cool. Alright, so, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll wrap up this session. Um... Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you guys for playing. That was that was fun. Uh, we got a little little a bit of an extra uh, tidbit of Issa there that I wasn't planning on. So that's fun. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She's everywhere. <laughs> so um, again, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, anybody that's tuned in for the first time, we appreciate it and hope you come by uh, or come back again to keep up with the adventures of this group. Um, see what they get to next. Um, I really like that that it ascendant quest. That was fun. That was something completely different in there than the rest of this book. I kind of felt like we had to do that just for the ridiculousness of it. Um, yeah. And I think as long as I'm remembering this correctly, the next one you're doing should be the end of like the current chapter. You move along, Ooh. move along on Ooh. some more story related things. Oh, <clears throat> Oh, just a little bit, a little bit closer to catching up to where you should be. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So everybody watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the episode. Um, be sure to check out the, uh, the links for Twitch and the society six shop. Um, you can hit us up on social media. Um, let us know what you thought on there too. Um, and also, I did check the tokens while we were playing those, those, uh, Ceramorph and Squidling tokens and things. Those were, uh, the David North illustration tokens. Uh, he makes a bunch of awesome stuff. He's constantly putting things out. In fact, uh, <clears throat> the week that Spelljammer came out, he dropped a whole slew of Spelljammer tokens, including some pretty awesome looking gift tokens. Um, 
I want to say there was plasmoids in there too. I don't know. He's, he's putting out stuff pretty constantly and consistently. So be sure to check those out. Um, and also I can't remember the name of that map where I got that map from, but I will be sure um, to drop a description or drop a, a link to that map. If anybody like that Nautiloid map um, that wants to buy it from the Roll20 shop, I'll make sure there's a link down below for that. Um, yeah, and tune back in next time. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode where uh, they try to hunt down these these gabos that have been uh, marauding around uh, 10 towns in Icewind Dale. So thanks again, everybody, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Adios. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Bye.